Hi, I'm Michael Fujinaka. I graduated from UCSD Medical School in 2011, and now I'm an anesthesiology resident at UCSD. I uh, put people to sleep for surgery every day, and my mom thinks I might put you guys to sleep this afternoon, but <laughs> we'll try not to do that. I'm gonna tell you a story about how I created an iPhone application without any prior iPhone programming experience, how I was able to create a product and bring it to market without any prior product development experience. And after all that mumbo jumbo, I'll tell you some things that are actually true. <laughs> I got my first iPhone as a gift from my parents, actually. And at first, I used it like a cell phone, you know, just calling people, sending texts. And then that night, I downloaded my first app. Not a paid app, mind you, because who'd pay a dollar or three dollars for an app? That's crazy. <laughs> of course, after a few days of using apps and downloading like hundreds of them, I put in my credit card and I've been buying apps ever since, loving every one of them. Apps are wonderful. They're these condensed little pieces of knowledge. They have so much knowledge in them. They have fun, like games, and you can carry it with you anywhere you go. And I think that's the beauty of apps. So a couple weeks after getting my iPhone, I was sitting at home in Stockton, California, and I was thinking, you know, just relaxing from medical school and thinking, how hard is it to make one of these things? So I looked it up on Google, and it turns out it's really simple. You register with Apple, you program the app, and you submit it. That's it. It's very simple. And right then, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to make an app. There was a problem, though. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know how to program these things. And I had taken a couple of programming classes from a community college in high school, but I'd never really fallen in love with programming, so I just kind of stopped doing it. But now I needed a programmer, so where did I look? Well, I went to Craigslist, and I sat there, and I typed in iPhone programming, iPhone programmer, and I got a few hits. And about a week later, when I was back here on campus, right by the library, I met up with a gentleman named Alan Gardner. Alan Gardner was a recent MIT graduate who was taking a couple of graduate school classes at UCSD. Alan um, had a startup that that was, a, that was programming iPhone apps, and in, in fact, I later found out he was the only employee of it, but still a startup. <laughs> Alan was really interested in um, my idea of creating an educational iPhone app, because there weren't that many on the market at that time. My idea was to teach students how to use a stethoscope. And I thought it was a good idea, because people, like medical students, nursing students, physician assistant students, respiratory therapy students, all get, an, all get a stethoscope as kind of a rite of passage. But the irony is, is that you never learn how to use a stethoscope for the first few years of school, as it were for, for myself. You are stuck listening to lectures, you have to read out of books, you take tests, but you don't get to practice. And it's probably a good thing for patients that you don't practice on them. <laughs> so I thought it would be a great idea to condense all the murmurs into one spot, one thing you can fit in your hand, and then you can study with it anywhere you are. If you're bored, if you're on a bus, if you're waiting for a bus, you can, you can sit there and practice the murmurs. Alan really liked the idea, and he agreed to do it. And I was just ecstatic, because I knew at that point I could get this done. Let me take a step back. Um, your heart is like a pump. It pumps blood to your body. And with any pumps, you have to have one-way valves, because you need to have blood only go in one direction and make sure it doesn't come backwards. If you were to um, take, your step, take a stethoscope and listen to someone's heart, or any of you can do this, you can uh, just take your chest and put it to someone's ear, uh, put your ear to someone's, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't put your chest to someone's ear, that would be awkward. <laughs> so anyway, if you, listen to, <laughs> if you listen to someone's heart, what you'd hear is this. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And those sounds, the lub dub, that's actually the sounds of the valve, the one-way valves closing. Now, there are problems that can arise with these valves. So if they don't open all the way, for whatever reason, they get cracky or whatever, that's called a stenotic murmur or a stenosis. And if the valves fail, meaning they let blood go backwards through your body, that's called a regurgitant murmur or a regurgitation. So instead of hearing a lub-dub, lub-dub, what you'd hear with a stethoscope Identifying a murmur is la pshtub, la pshtub, la pshtub. Or you might hear a shtub, shtub, shtub. <laughs> Beatboxing skills, right? <laughs> <laughs> so
So as soon as I finished meeting Alan right there by the library, I went back to uh, my apartment and I got started. And the first thing I needed to do was to get the sounds that I wanted to play, the, the murmurs that I wanted to teach people. I thought about going around and collecting the so sounds of my own, you know, with like an electronic recorder or something, but the more I thought about it, that would take months. Finding the right murmurs, finding the right patients that would agree to let me record them, that would take forever. But I knew online there were already libraries of heart murmurs that people had collected. So for the next couple hours, I sat there, looked up every single heart murmur website online and, and, and emailed them. I think I sent about 14 emails and I waited, and about a couple of days later, I got four responses. And out of those four responses, three people let me use their heart sounds. And again, I was really happy because you know, everything was coming together. The next thing I did was I created a Google document. And um, a Google document is very similar to Microsoft Word, with one exception, that you can access it from anywhere you want. So if you're at McDonald's and they have the internet or Starbucks, you can log on to your same Google document and figure out what you were working on and, and keep working on it. You can even do this on your iPhone now, which is really cool. So as part of my development process, I laid out all my ideas. I said, and then I laid out how I wanted the app to flow. So I put the buttons I wanted to see on the home screen, the options to give people if they wanted to use the resource to look, listen to a specific murmur, or if they wanted to take a quiz. I put all that in the Google document so that when Alan, my programmer, went to work, he could just easily read it and see exactly what I want. The next thing that was a little bit more challenging for me was to figure out how to create the diagrams. Alan said he would do all the back end, all the programming, all the coding. I wouldn't have to do that, but I would have to supply everything that you visually see. And I, I'm not that big into photo editing. I'd never used Photoshop. I didn't even have it on my computer, never tried it. So what I did was I went onto Google and searched photo editing software, and I got this program, and it was called GIMP. So GIMP is a program very, like, very much like Photoshop, except it's absolutely free. And I downloaded it on my computer immediately, and then I realized, oh man, I don't know how to use this. So I went on to YouTube and typed out how to use GIMP. I got a couple awkward results, but I said how to use GIMP photo <laughs> editing software. <laughs> um, and in about an hour after watching these awesome instructional videos and learning about this, I was able to create very simple diagrams that I ended up using. And it took me a while to play with it. Over the next week or so, I kept playing with them and kept editing them down until they started to look really good. And that's the, some, something that the final product looked like. And uh, that's the power of YouTube. You know, you can go on and ask how to do something, and they'll show you. The next part, <laughs> I see someone drowsing off, so I guess, uh, I guess I can put people to sleep two ways. <laughs> um, the next part of what I had to do was uh, make, make the sounds. And again, I didn't have any program with sound editing, and I was, obviously I wasn't a DJ or anything like that. So I went on to Google and I typed in, in audio editing software, so sound editing software. And I was lucky. Another program came up called Audacity. And Audacity is a completely free audio editing software. Didn't know how to use it, so I went onto YouTube, typed in how to use Audacity, much more clear results this time. <laughs> and within a, about half an hour, I'd say I'd learned how to chop these 20 second clips that these websites had let me use in, down into one second clips. I just wanted to be able to show one heartbeat, let people learn the murmurs, you know, just over and over again, repetition. And so that's what I did. The last part of my development, which took me a couple weeks as well, um, was I created a Google spreadsheet. And spreadsheets just like Microsoft Excel, except that with Google, you can log in from anywhere you are, and any number of people can actually log into your spreadsheet and work on it at the same time. So I went through and I wrote about all the murmurs. I talked about how you could treat them, what to look for in them. And then when I was done writing, I asked my friends to proofread this and a couple of doctors to proofread the, what I had written. And so we were actually editing this real time. You know, one person was in La Jolla, I was in Hillcrest. It was very, it was very, very cool. Alan um, worked really hard on this app and Within about six weeks, Alan had the first prototypes up. 
And so I was really excited to see what he had put together. And what we had to do then was beta test. And so beta testing is going through your prototypes and just ripping them apart, making sure every single button works, making sure that if you don't like part of what it looks like on the screen that you can change it. So we went through about six different iterations of the app. And finally, almost exactly two months after I had talked to Alan right here on campus, we submitted our completed app, iMurmur, to iTunes, uh, the iTunes store for review. And when that app popped up on, onto my phone, when it got reviewed and, and approved, I was absolutely ecstatic. It is probably one of the most wonderful moments I have ever had in my life. And it was just a sense of joy that I had finished something. In the past, I had worked on other projects and burned a lot of hours trying to make a surfboard bag company. I tried to make a lock picking business. <laughs> I tried to make helmets, and I even had to learn how to sew to make the helmet prototypes. But none of those worked. But finally, I had, I had something, something that I could show people and something that people could buy. When I woke up the next morning, uh, you know, by a stroke of luck, I remember had climbed to the number two position in the nation and stayed that way for months. So that was a very happy ending for us there. I, I want to share a quick little anecdote. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to share a quick little anecdote. My mom was taking my grandma to UC, UC Davis Medical Center up, up in uh, NorCal. And um, at one of her visits, this train of doctors came by my grandma, each of them putting a stethoscope. So there were cardiologists, there were two cardiology fellows, a couple medicine residents, and a couple, or maybe a handful of medical students. And they all were taking turns listening to my grandma. And at one point, my grandma, you know, she's a very nice lady, she said, oh, what are you guys actually listening for? And the cardiologist said, oh, ma'am, you have a murmur. So I was showing my students, this is what this type of murmur looks like. And my grandma goes, oh, a murmur. I think my grandson just created um, a computer program about murmurs. And the cardiologist turned to my mom and said, oh, what, what's she talking about? And my mom said, oh, my son just made an iPhone app called iMurmur. And at that point, um, my mom says the medical students and the, the residents pulled out their iPhones and said, oh, oh you mean this one? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it's very, very nice to know that other people were using this to um, help in their education. We had one more very happy event after we released iMurmur, and that is I was approached by an electric stethoscope company um, to buy the app and to buy, take it off my hands. So after talking about it, um, I ended up selling it to this company. So that was really happy for me. It kind of was full circle. So um, this is the part of the, this is, now this is, this is my conclusion. This is going to be the part that's actually true. <laughs> so... I've, I listen to a lot of speeches. I've been to a number, a number of graduations, commencements, and I even listen to motivational speeches on YouTube. And <laughs> at the very end of their talk, people always say, you know, dream your dreams, follow your dreams, pursue your passion, be happy every day. And when I'm done, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going I'm to follow my dreams. I'm going to do it. But always I, I'm left wondering how. Okay, how do I do it? And that's what I hope this talk kind of showed you today. I did it by using resources, Craigslist, YouTube, asking my friends for help, emailing people, and by working like a maniac. This was not easy. This was not an easy two months for me. But I wanted it really bad. I wanted to finish this product so bad that I was willing to give up sleep to learn the things I didn't know and to learn the skills that I needed to finish the project. And I think that's the most important part about how. It's believing that you're going to be able to do this thing without, without knowing how to get there, but just believing that you can figure it out along the way. And that's how I created an iPhone application without any prior iPhone programming experience. I had a dream to make an iPhone app. I worked really hard and used resources to get it done. And that's what I hope for you. I hope that after this speech is done, you guys can go home, dream your dreams, and, and just know and believe that you can figure them out and figure out how to complete them. So thank you for listening to me.